Woke up to some sensational news today as a coup has been reported in Myanmar. There has been reports of all the leading leaders, including Aung San Suu Kyi, being put under arrest. Democracy in the southeast nation of Myanmar was newfound as the decades-long house arrest on the de facto leader Suu Kyi was only lifted in 2011, while the new development is bound to be opposed by the world community. Good morning, I'm Amar Singh Pradhan and these are the top stories of this hour. A full-scale coup reported in Myanmar as leader Aung San Suu Kyi, President Win Myint, among many other high-profile leaders, arrested. Speaker Agni Sapkora sends back the recommendations on the appointment of officials made by the Constitutional Council, terming the nominations as unconstitutional. Hearings on behalf of the petitioners on the case filed against the dissolution of the House of Representatives concludes. Hearings on behalf of defendants to begin today. And Lionel Messi scores 658th goal for Barcelona with a trademark free kick as they move to the second in La Liga with a 2-1 win over Atletico Bilbao. Speaker Agni Sapkoda has sent back the original documents of the decision regarding the recommendations of officials at various constitutional bodies to Constitutional Council questioning the credibility of the nominations. This has raised uncertainty regarding the Constitutional Council decision itself. We have more in this report. The Constitutional Council had recommended the appointments of more than three dozen officials at the Commission for the Investigation of Abuse of Authority, the National Human Rights Commission and several other constitutional bodies on 15th of December. However, the decision of the Constitutional Council's meeting participated by the Prime Minister, Chief Justice and Chairman of the National Assembly was revealed only on 28th of December after the dissolution of the House of Representatives. A letter was sent to the Parliament Secretariat for the hearing only on 18th of December. The Speaker, Deputy Speaker and the Leader of the main opposition party are also members of the Constitutional Council, which consists of six members. However, the government had introduced an ordinance that would allow the Council to take a decision by consensus with the presence of only three members. Speaker Sapkota sent back the original documents to the Constitutional Council on Sunday that was received for the parliamentary hearing. Speaker Sapkota has questioned the credibility on the decision made by the Constitutional Council meeting that was attended by only three members. Constitutionally, officials at the constitutional bodies are appointed following parliamentary hearings. However, as per the Parliament Act, nominations are endorsed if the parliamentary hearing could not take place within 45 days of the recommendation. The issue has become more complicated after Speaker Sapkota returned all the original documents citing the precedent of not having a parliamentary hearing committee due to the dissolution of the House of Representatives and withdrawing the Constitutional Council's recommendations five years ago. Meanwhile, a writ has been filed at the Supreme Court challenging the Constitutional Council's decision, terming it as against the spirit of the Constitution. Legal practitioners on behalf of the read petitioners have concluded the hearings on the case filed against the dissolution of the House of Representatives. The hearings on behalf of the defendants will begin from today. The hearings at the constitutional bench of the Supreme Court on behalf of the petitioners, which had begun from 17th of January, ended yesterday. During the hearings, 13 legal practitioners reiterated that the decision of the dissolution of the lower house was unconstitutional and an undemocratic practice. 13 writ petitions who were filed against Prime Minister K. B. Sharma Oli's decision to dissolve the lower house on 20th of December. More than 60 legal practitioners pleaded on behalf of the writ petitioners. During the hearings that continued for 13 days, advocates claimed that the Constitution did not authorize the Prime Minister to dissolve the lower house and added that the Constitution envisioned the dissolution only if it failed to choose the Premier. They demanded the Apex Court not to uphold the government's decision. The hearings on behalf of the defendants will now begin from today. 
The President, Prime Minister, Speaker and the Office of the Prime Minister have been made defendants in the case. Eleven advocates from the Office of the Attorney General, including Attorney General Agni Karel, will defend the President, Prime Minister and the Office of the Prime Minister. After the conclusion of the hearings from both the sides, the Supreme Court will give its verdict based on the suggestions from an amicus curiae, which is usually a neutral group of lawyers who assist in the court's decision making. And in our public voice segment, we had asked the local residents in Rukum district what is the reason for the division among men opposition and fringe parties as soon as the ruling Nepal Communist Party was divided. Before we go for a short break, let's take a look at what they have to say. अहिले पार्टी भित्र सबै पार्टी भित्र विभाजनको अवस्था देखिएको छ सत्तामा पुग्नको लागि आफ्नो व्यक्तिगत स्वार्थको लागि पार्टी फुटाउने क्रममा छन् सबै दलहरुमा निष्ठा भन्दा बढी सत्ता स्वार्थको लागि यो चाहिँ विभाजित भएको जस्तो मलाई लाग्छ एन्ड नाउ टाइम फर सेगमेन्ट पब्लिक पोल्स वेयर इट टेक्स्टस विथ देयर ओपिनियन What's your take on the Prime Minister and Ministers attending political gatherings overlooking their works? Your options are option A, effect of party split, option B, lack of seriousness and option C, so of strength. The voting is on, type NAWS, select your option A, B or C and send it to 34001 to share opinion with us. And it's now time for our special segment of the beat. The orange produced this season has drastically reduced. Places like Bagchor, Chhatreshwari, Sharada, Siddhakumak, Kapurkot are the pocket areas in Salyan when it comes to orange farming. With the massive decline in the produce this year, the oranges from Salyan have not found the desired market. A local orange farmer, Lok Bahadur Dangi, who has cultivated oranges in an area of 16 rupees of land in Bakchar municipality, has only managed to sell half of the produce at the end of the peak season this year. Dangi, who embraced orange farming as a source of income nine years ago, said that the produce this season was greatly hampered, while orange traders too have not come to his farm. Dangi last year had earned a profit of 1 million rupees, while this season he speculates the income to be half the amount. The orange farmers in the area have a similar story to narrate. The Office of the Agriculture Development Salyan had estimated a fall of 30% in the orange produced this season due to adverse weather conditions. Salyan had produced just over 10,000 metric tons of oranges last year, bringing home over 217 million rupees. Oranges from Salyan are taken to cities including Kathmandu, Butwal, Nepalganj, among other places. The number of water birds in Kapilvastu's Jagdishpur Lake has gone down in recent times. The bird count last year had reached 18,000, while this year the number has declined to 12,000. A team led by bird expert Him Sagar Baral used two telescopes, binoculars and cameras to carry out the bird census. The experts in the field say that the color, structure and sound help in bird census. Some 43 different species of birds have been identified at Jagdishpur Reservoir, the largest wetland in the country, and home to a number of endangered bird species, including Asian openbill, black-winged kite, long-tailed shrike, among others. Apart from environmental hazards, poaching, human encroachment of the wetland, among others, has contributed to the declining number of water birds. This is Sarah Chitrakar for our special segment of the Beat and Kantapur News Desk. And those were our latest headlines. Stay with us for more news and entertainment on KDBSD. Good day.